Hey guys, welcome to game one of the final match between Dentarg and Seraph. We have Dentarg starting the bottom left-hand corner as the orange Protoss. Upper left-hand corner, we have Seraph as the pink Protoss. This is going to be a rematch between these two, which bodes well for Dentarg. And I know you're like, hey, what happened to the losers match? What happened? To I think Halcyon must have withdraw, uh, withdrawn, withdrawn. I can't say that. There was a withdraw of uh, Halcyon. At least I do not see replays currently for Group B of the losers match. So I just have to make the assumption that Halcyon uh, pulled out of this season of BSL at that stage. Either way, uh, if that did not happen, we can assume that Seraph ended up winning and advancing. Anyway, Dentark Seraph, PvP. Should be an interesting one. This is going to be on Shakur's Plateau, which I think four-player maps... I mean, Protoss, you know, the cheesier of the races... I think everybody can agree on that, even the Protoss players, right? It's like, we get to do fun, cheesy things. Uh, particularly against each other and against Terran players. A little bit harder to pull off against Zerg. I guess that's kind of an interesting thought. Like, who who gets to cheese who in what situations? I think Terran underestimate the amount of cheese they have. There's kind of like, I feel like there's two types of Terran, right? There's the Terran where they're like, I'm going to do this crazy all-in stuff that annoys my opponents. By the way, we're seeing a gateway opening for both players. We'll see if... And so no cheese, at least initially here. Seraph making his way. Is he going to scout clockwise or counterclockwise will be the big question. Scouting can be a huge advantage, PvP. It looks like he's going to end up scouting clockwise. So he's going to come across Dentarg's base last. Dentarg going ahead and grabbing a Simulator. I think the standard thing to do is go Zealot first, then Dragoon, just in case. A Simulator right here. Um, and it looks like he's going to get an, at least an early scouting advantage into Seraph's base. But yeah, I wonder, because, you know, I feel like there's two types of Terran. There's skill, honor, hard work Terrans, like Artosis, um, Shamtu, special shout out to those guys. actually had a fun exchange with them on Twitter. Because um, they, I was like, hey, they got, you know, kind of the impassioned rage tilt streams. They're like, truth sayers, truth saying streams. So go there for truth. Um, but then, comparatively, you also have, you know, the cheesy Terran who do interesting things like Vulture Drops or the Proxy Barracks, or there's just a lot of options for cheese. Um... And there's kind of the players who play in between. And I feel like the in-between players... Honestly, Flash ended up... His first big splash was knocking out Bisu with some cheese. And I believe the OSL. So I feel like it's the guys who play in between that are really, really scary and dangerous. And I actually really like it when Artosis actually throws out... I think that's when he has his most enjoyment. And when I think... Uh, I, I like his play when he's cheesing. I'll just be blunt about that. But I feel like when are the opportunities? Like, what are the opportunities? Because obviously, Zerg can do interesting lurker drops, can do... But it feels like, okay, what opportunity... Like, who gets the more cheese when? Who has the opportunity to have the, the cheddar or the smelly gouda or whatever you want to say um, at what stage of what maps? Kind of interesting uh, food for thought. Anyway, Zealot first from both players with the Dragoon follow-up, I assume. Dentarg able to sneak out. Ooh, actually just going to move up with his Zealot initially. So while I'm ranting... Seraph getting a zealot inside of his base because he was chasing after this probe and the do a huge disruption in mining did not end up losing any probes initially and might get a zealot kill the zealot turning around trying to get a bit of additional damage but one probe returning a base another probe moving out actually to maybe I'm not sure what's with this additional probe I'm wondering if that's a miss rally but this is going to be two probes and two zealots kind of outfield it looks like it is in fact going to turn around so a little bit of trouble micromanaging on both fields. Dentarg, I think, is going to end up with the better part of that exchange because he was able to disrupt a lot of mining and was able to, uh, was able to preserve his Zealot. And he's going to be able to deny information from here. I thought I saw a robotics facility. I think there was a cancellation and a redrop of that robotics facility. We're seeing it looks like a second gateway here for Seraph. Range is upgrading. And two, two Dragoons currently just kind of holding that front door. Neither player opting to be aggressive. It is just a long distance of a map. And now Dentarg once again sending out that probe to perhaps, I think he wants to get a spot at that natural expansion before he opts for potentially going for a Reaver build. No, I take it back. He's going to go Robo. Second gate. I'm wondering if he is uh, oh, he's also maybe just checking. He wants to put that pylon alongside so he can see. I assume this means he wants to go Observer first with that pylon indicator because usually you want to plop that down to because this is kind of denying his own that's an odd thing to do because one that denies his own third but i think it, it also does is it kind of lets him spot shuttles coming across 
So half I want to say this suggests observer first into expansion, but the other half of it I want to say is that maybe he's planning on going aggressive. Because, uh, yeah, plopping that pylon means he's not going to be able to get a third sooner rather than later. So Seraph stacking Dragoons up here. Usually with this amount of Dragoons, you want to kind of press forward to at least give the impression he's able to wander up. Uh, Dentarg able to wander up. He is going to go ahead and place a pylon there. But this is going to be three gates comparatively for Dentarg. So he is going to have an overall production advantage. And with Observer first before Robo, he might have an opportunity to go ahead and uh, run Seraph over, or run Dentarg over with his troop count, depending on a lot of factors, but micromanagement, how late this Reaver comes out, whether he builds Shuttle first before Reaver, a lot of those things. Observer making its way across. So this is so this is interesting. He actually places pylons at both locations on that third. He doesn't. He hasn't checked that natural expansion. He's still looking for cheese. <clears throat> He's sitting on two gates. He is building this reaver. Assuming this reaver gets out in plenty of time, looks like it will. It can be uh, something that can more or less overcome uh, the gate deficiency. We are seeing an observatory planting down. So right now, as things stand, I'm going to give a advantage to Dentarg. He's going to go ahead and grab his natural expansion. Uh, this probe, not. Well, is he going to be able to wander up? Explodes, but does he a probe in position to go ahead and potentially take that natural expansion? The observer wandering up sees an empty natural. He's going to be able to head, go ahead and wander up and see three gateways before an observer pops here and picks that off. Needs to evacuate to make sure it stays uh, stays preserved. But So now, Dentarg in a situation where he's got a decent amount of supply. He's got a lot of probes. Seraph actually cut a lot of probes, and I remember this being an issue in game one as well, where it seemed like Seraph couldn't keep up with his uh, probe production comparatively, and I'm not sure if that was just um, cutting probes intentionally to go ahead and get more Dragoons out or something along those lines, but it put him at an overall economic disadvantage. He's moving out with his Dragoons and Zealot. Got just shy of a full control group of Dragoons. Comparatively, there are fewer Dragoons, but there is this Reaver, so that Reaver is going to be a big factor. And keep in mind, he's moving into a, clo a close reinforcement point, and this Reaver needs to get... So here's the thing, that Reaver needs to have effective shots on top of the Dragoons in Concavity. Right now, Surf getting the better part of this battle. Reaver shot right there, and it's getting it got take out, taken out almost immediately. That might force a cancellation of Dentarg's natural expansion nexus. So I feel like Dentarg actually had the units to maybe defend that, but that Reaver taking uh, shots at the Zealot initially and not able to participate in that fight as much as uh, potentially wanted to. Now Surf has an opportunity to flood reinforcements across and perhaps win this game just shoving his way up this ramp. Another Dragoon getting wiped out. Probes being pulled off the line to try to defend. And at least clog this natural expansion and provide some more time. But right now, keep in mind, Seraph has three gates that he can produce off of. And the Dragoon just surviving. He still has not been able to, to breach the ramp. This has, this has provided some delay on building that natural expansion. This has caused some economic delay pulling in those probes, although I think he's got plenty of probes to pull here. Again, at 31 probes, it was oversaturated for one base. But Dentarg repressing. The Reaver is there. So I believe Dentarg should be able to hold this now. Because again, two gates versus three, as long as those Reavers are getting good shots off on the Dragoons, you can often, with the right micro, you can, you can hold this. So he's going to, yeah, he's going to force Seraph back. Reestablish, he is going to wait perhaps on that second Reaver and go ahead and grab his natural expansion. Now Seraph, this feels very light, going to go ahead and wander out and, put, and set up to go ahead and take his additional Nexus. He's going to find this pylon. So at least, you know, taking out 100 minerals, 100 minerals right there. But yeah, Dentarg feeling more comfortable. Might regroup for another attack once he has six Dragoons in total. But this is going to, again, go against four and two Reavers. The Observer is overhead. There's also a pylon in the front to go ahead and create some distractionary fire. And these two Reavers got to make Dentarg feel very, very comfortable. And I still do not see robotic support bay anywhere from Seraph. Seraph is continuing to try to, to force this through with just Dragoons. He's getting his, no, his own Nexus up. He's going to be, so he's going to be behind in tech. He is going to be behind in the overall probe count because Dentar continues to produce probes so it means as soon as this natural expansion is up he will be able to completely saturate it instantaneously and do some good support in his overall count. He's got his third gateway up. Kind of snuck that while I wasn't looking. And he... So Seraph again transitioning. Yeah. 
transitioning into a situation where I'm concerned about his ability to, to come back in this game. The Observer meandering its way back just in case some Dark Templar were able to do something. The Reaver is now in a shuttle as well, which means they can scoop up and avoid some of those uh, Dragoon shots. Observer getting splatted. I'm not sure if Dentarg saw the Shimmer and realized it was there or not. And there's that probe saturation. I'm still not seeing any additional gateways prior to this for Dentarg to really capitalize on the superior production, but overall in the supply count, he's sitting at 70. Moving out with a lot of his Dragoons, actually getting caught a little bit. He was look, looked like he was opting to take a third, and now he's got a bit of a split force. The Reaver is not engaged in this battle as well. The shuttle quickly down, but I still think he should have enough to go ahead and defend this. But that is going to slow him down a little bit. And that Reaver exposed again as the Dragoons are attacking to the south. And now, he's even though it's even count, he's going to go ahead and back up. Uh, back to his natural expansion. So losing two Reavers, and it looks like a probe, through a bit of Mist Micro. Seraph still, he has his natural expansion up, but still isn't saturating it as of yet. So Dentark's still ahead overall. But a little bit of a miscue giving Seraph some more breathing room. Finally, Seraph saturating that natural expansion. Let's see if he plops down some additional production. Well behind in the overall probe count. He's actually going to go Templar Archives. So we're moving towards a longer mid-game. One additional gateway. An additional assimilator. And another reaver being produced for Dentarg. Keep in mind Dentarg at this stage. He can just sit back and continue to produce Dragoons. Getting that fourth gateway. He can continue to produce Dragoons and match Seraph's uh, Dragoon count. He just needs to make sure he keeps up with his micromanagement. And Dentarg also keep in mind. He saturated this base almost instantaneously, and it took a while. Like, Seraph, I don't even know that he's still... What is this? He's sitting at a good amount of probes to saturate with the minerals. Still doesn't have uh, his gas up. Dentarg moving an observer out. Wants to try to get eyes on what his opponent's up to at this stage of things. Is waiting on... Is playing very cautiously, waiting on his Reaver follow-up. He's got about... What is this? A 15, 20 supply lead? Uh, Dentarg with a significant supply count lead. And I think he's going to be in position to take a third more rapidly than Seraph is. There is potential here where we have a Templar Archives. If we see Storm being researched, maybe with a decent storm that engages over the natural expansion before Dentarg moves out, that could be a way for Seraph to sneak back into this match, potentially. He's also getting Zealot Leg Speed, which makes Zealot so strong. And Zealots do a lot of damage if they can get on top of those Dragoons, particularly in pocket locations again over the natural expansion. But my expectation is, is that Dentarg is going to move out and go ahead and establish a third and take some form of map control before Seraph is really able to utilize that tech advantage. So this is going to be seven gateways overall. Still a handful of Dragoons kind of gathered up in the middle of the Zealots, holding back to the main. Five gateways comparatively. One Dragoon getting splatted, it looks like, as it got separated from the rest of the group. And now Dentarg, yeah, moving out. Again, about a 20. Now moving up to about a 20 supply lead. He's kind of been hovering around that this entire time. And a lot of Dragoons and Reaver, and actually Speed Shell. I mean, cycling around these Zealots. Now, keep in mind, these Zealots are leg, leg speed upgraded. This is, And he's going to sneak around, try to pick off that High Templar before it's a factor. It looks like that High Templar does sneak off and the Reaver getting picked off. And actually, it feels like these Reavers not able to do the maximum that they they were capable of. And as a result, these Zealots able to just whittle on these Dragoons. But there's still just more Dragoons for Dentarg overall. And as a result, Seraph getting the worst end of that fight. Loses his High Templar, loses a lot else. And I'm expecting GG in not too long as these Dragoons start pressing up into that natural expansion. Dentarg slow walking these Zealots across. And as long as he can get that Observer, where's the Observer? He's got two observers right there. These Dark Templar aren't going to be much of a factor, um, comparatively. They do do some damage. There's a shuttle kind of wandering around, but it doesn't have really anything in it. If you can micro-walk, it's harder to micro-walk against Speed Zealots, but it is still possible. And as these Slow Zealots make, ooh, make their way up, they can also provide some decent defense. A Dragoon getting picked off by Storm, but it, didn't, it wasn't a game-winning Storm, is I guess what I want to say there. These Zealots, ooh. Sacrificing their lives for the cause. Getting a little bit... Those are the guys that wanted medals. And it looks like Seraph, what he's going to try to do is maybe sneak an expansion. Maybe sneak a third somewhere out here. 
Dentarg losing control of his zealots and the zealots engaging his opponent's zealots kind of in open field and getting the worst exchange there. But he is going to go ahead and grab his third in the midst of this. So now it's speed zealots, a single Dark Templar, and a high Templar that does not have enough energy moving across that shuttle actually providing scouting information. And I think, again, with what's just being produced, honestly, a Reaver at each expansion should be sufficient to go ahead and defend this. Double Forge down for Dentarg as well. He still has about a 20 supply lead. And I missed this. I'm wondering if the shuttle ended around, because now we have zealots that somehow managed to get straight into the main, push the probes out, and they're working on that Nexus. Counterattack. For Seraph at the natural expansion, I'm missing all sorts of action while I was distracted uh, talking there. It looks like the Zealot's going to press in there. Reaver, a little bit exposed. That's providing some time, though. The SimCity alone providing some time. I don't see the cannons wiped out. There are observers to take care of that Dark Templar, but Seraph able to do some damage there. His Nexus is somewhat low, now resaturating his main. So a little bit of action here right at the end. <laughs> little bit of action here at the end. Seraph finding some breathing room. Unfortunately for him, his main is almost mined out. His natural is uh, is going to produce for him, but Dentark still has a th this third base that he can go ahead and resaturate to again, and he is going to start saturating it now, moving some probes up to that location. I think I missed a shuttle drop there. And there were a lot of probes. There's a lot of missed mining times, and I believe a lot of probes that were killed in the midst of that as well. Some Zealots moving across. There is an Archon. So it feels like right now Dentarg is still sitting on Dragoon Tech. We'll see if he makes his way up. He is starting to get a Zealot leg speed. His main is mined out. So it is technically one base. Technically two base versus two base. But this is going to be out in not too long. And I believe the better saturation still goes to Dentarg overall. And he's sitting on three gas because this gas is still producing. Uh, comparatively. Another cannon warping in at the natural, just in case some DTs manage to sneak across. Right now, Seraph actually has a supply lead all of a sudden, after all of that macro and all of that back and forth. So where I thought this was going to be an easy Dentarg win, all of a sudden, Seraph through a flurry of macro, defending a, a Zealot sneak attack at his main, and doing a punishing counterattack, not only as a supply count lead, I also like the composition he's got, honestly, to go ahead and engage this. And this is only a single cannon to defend this natural expansion. And Dentarg needs to keep this natural expansion up and running. Just checking for a fourth. The Dragoon's running headlong piecemeal into the Zealot Force. The Zealot's going to go ahead and try to cut them off. And instead, looks like they're going to go ahead and engage... Provide a wall and try to engage in this natural expansion. The cannon's working. This is going to cause Dentark to lose more probes and more mining time at the natural. The Zealot's wandering across. Some High Templar... Just kind of wandering. And you can just see the, the Dragoons just got melted there to the north. And there's still Zealot's free reigning. I think Seraph's done it. I think he's going to be able to take this first match. More reinforcements marching their way across. Uh, kind of an empty side storm here and there. There's I, I can't keep up with the action. It is absolutely everywhere. And there's GG from Dentarg. He had no units. So Dentarg went from what looked to be like a sheer win and a counterattack. I'm going to go ahead and rewind and see how these zealots got in. Kind of see the, the moment it happened. So what looked like a, a sheer win, all of a sudden Dentarg... Losing production at his main and not able to keep up and just ended up with a uh, a disadvantage in just kind of the, the pure unit composition. And got out positioned as well. Yeah, I really want to see whether these elts just walked in or not. It's kind of my the follow-up. Okay, so he gets here. Runs up this attack. Just zelts defending. Where's the shuttle? There's the shuttle still. Here's more Zealots making their way across. Zealots overhead. Continued size storms. Dentar going ahead and taking that 9 o'clock base. There's the shuttle. 
Yeah, loading up and sneaking. Very sneaky drop while that those units were out of position. And I want to see how much this did. It looks like Seraph saw it almost immediately, so he was able to pull probes, although it looks like the probes had some trouble making their way across. So actually didn't even lose a lot. Did not even lose a lot. So well played overall by Seraph. Game one goes to him. We'll move on to game two momentarily.